How's it going guys? I'm James from KitGuru and today we're looking at a new pre-built gaming system from PC Specialist. This is the Vortex S3 system and it's actually PC Specialist's first system to be equipped with the latest Intel 10th generation desktop processors. So inside here you've got a Z490 motherboard platform and an Intel Core i7 10700K CPU which is very similar to the previous 9th generation Core i9 9900K but with just a, a few tweaks to the base and boost frequencies and with a slightly reduced price. So the Vortex S3 system is available to purchase from the PC Specialist website now. Uh, in the configuration that we have here for review the system costs just a touch under £1,650 but you do have the option when you're ordering on the PC Specialist website to kind of play around with the specification to adjust it to your preference so you could swap out graphics cards or change CPU or add extra storage you know kind of tailor it to your own needs so in terms of the specification of this Vortex S3 that we have for review it comes inside a Cooler Master H500 case which is like a medium size mid tower chassis uh, along the front panel you've got this large mesh vented front section which will allow obviously plenty of cool air coming into the front of the system to keep the system temperature nice and under control. Uh, just behind the mesh front panel you've got a pair of 200mm Cooler Master RGB fans so again they'll be drawing in plenty of nice cool air from the front. At the back of the system you've got a basic looking plain black 120mm system fan and then PC Specialist has mounted the 240mm all-in-one CPU cooler in the top so that will again be helping to exhaust the warm air out. And then along the left hand side of the case you've got this large tempered glass side panel. It's got a slight tint to it but it's really quite light. You can quite easily see inside and have a look at all that expensive hardware that you've forked out for. Uh, to remove the tempered glass side panel there's just two sort of thumb screws on the side. Uh, they also have a slot in so you can put a flat blade screwdriver in there if you need to and then they just kind of lift it away a little bit and then lift it up and remove. So with the tempered glass side panel removed we could see a bit more clearly into the system now and like I said previously this is based on an Intel Z490 motherboard platform and it's actually an ROG Strix Z490F from ASUS. It's got a nice kind of matte black appearance to it, uh, gives it a real kind of stealthy look inside and then there's the odd bits of silver accents and then a bit of RGB bling lighting to the rear I.O. shroud. So for graphics there's a RTX 2070 Super from Palette. It's a decent graphics card, it's not the most high end you can buy. I'd probably say it's like in the mid to high end range. Uh, we think this has probably been paired with the 10700K because the 8 core 16 thread part it's no longer the flagship CPU in the 10th generation series. So that's probably why these two have been paired with each other and maybe say your 2080 Supers and your 2080 Ti's they're more likely to come in systems with the 10 core 10900K and there's also 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 3000 megahertz memory and for storage there's two SSD drives in this system no mechanical drives you've got a 500 gigabyte Samsung 970 Evo Plus M.2 NVMe drive and that contains the Windows installation and then for additional storage you've got a Samsung 860 QVO 1TB SATA SSD. In terms of CPU cooling a PC Specialist has chosen a 240ml all-in-one liquid cooler. Uh, they label it as a PCS uh, Frostflow 240 series RGB cooler but it's actually supplied by ID Cooling. It's one of their Zoomflow 240 ARGB coolers. We expect this to be perfectly adequate for this CPU even if it's under you know some really extreme loads. So the theme of the system it's kind of got this real stealthy looking all black design. The graphics card, motherboard and memory they're all black. The motherboard has these silver accents on it which kind of contrast nicely with the black and then you've got RGB lighting zones in the front, uh, the top fans on the all-in-one cooler and then there's also an RGB lighting on the CPU block. The RGB lighting it's all connected up directly to the motherboard header so you can control all the different RGB lighting colors and patterns with the 
ASUS or a Sync software that comes pre-installed. Or alternatively, if you want a more stealthy looking system, you could turn off the RGB lighting completely. So maybe if you buy this system and then you're thinking about the future, the Z490 motherboard that will support the next generation of Intel desktop processors, so that gives you a nice upgrade path into the future. Uh, there's also plenty of space inside this case for future upgrades. Now, if you're thinking that one and a half terabytes might not be enough storage for you in the future, you know, with games being like over 100 gigabytes now to download, there's an extra two 3.5 inch uh, hard drive bays at the front there, so you could add additional storage there, and also around the back, you've got space to add another 2.5 inch SSD drive. So although we expect the RTX 2070 Super to offer us some decent frame rates in, uh, in gaming, uh, if you are thinking of upgrading that in the future or if you're thinking of adding another to running SLI, not that it's really optimal these days, you may want to have a look at the power supply as well because that it's a 650 watt uh, gold rated unit from Corsair. So adding another graphics card, more hard drives, bits and bobs into the system, that might be getting close to that power supply's limit. But with the system in the configuration it's in now, it's more than enough power to, to run everything that's needed. The power supply is actually a semi-modular design, so that means it's got a fixed 24 pin cable, but the rest of the cables, they can be connected and disconnected depending on the components that are inside. So if you were to upgrade the hard drive, add a hard drive or add another graphics card in the future, you would need to connect up extra cables. Now, that shouldn't be too difficult inside this system because along the bottom where the power supply is located, there is this removable power supply shroud and it just it's just a case of removing a thumb screw at the back, it just slides out and then you've got access to the power supply in the future. And if you're feeling really adventurous with the upgrades in the future, and you want to change the whole cooling system to say a custom loop, the three and a half inch drive bay at the front, that's also removable. There's just a single thumb screw that holds that in position on the floor of the case, and then you can take the whole cage out, and then that will give you plenty of space to install an extra uh, large radiator at the front, more fans, and even there'll be space in there for a pump res combo. PC specialist include an accessory pack with the Vortex S3. In fact, they include this accessory pack with all their pre-built systems. And inside the pack, there's various user manuals for say the motherboard, graphics card, and the case, as well as a bunch of cables. You've got a UK three pin power cable, uh, additional cables for the modular power supply, extra SATA power cables, and just other bits and bobs that generally come with a motherboard. And as well as that, PC specialist, they also include this uh, acrylic front panel and that's designed to be an alternative to the mesh front. Uh, to install the acrylic panel, you simply just unclip the entire front panel from the chassis. There's just about six or eight screws that hold the mesh panel on. The mesh panel then slides out and you can fit this in its place. That will obviously have uh, some kind of effect on airflow and maybe um, increase temperature inside the system. That's something that we'll have a look at later on during our thermal performance test but I mean I quite like the look of this mesh front panel but it's you know it's kind of a depends what your taste is obviously with the acrylic front panel you're going to see more of the front fans and the RGB lighting so if that's what you like then maybe you want to switch over to the acrylic panel. So now we know a bit more about the system we know the components are inside and we know how much it's going to cost let's move on and see what the performance is like. So we expect this to be you know, a pretty decent system for gaming, probably 1080p, 1440p resolution will be its optimal for gaming and we expect it will be, be best paired up with kind of a high refresh rate 1080 or 1440p monitor. Also, due to the fact that this is quite a high core count CPU with 8 cores and 16 threads, we're also expecting it to be a decent workstation or a decent system for productivity content creation, video editing, those kind of tasks. So to measure that performance, we've run a series of gaming benchmarks using you know, reasonably current games, using their inbuilt benchmark tools, and we'll also be running various other synthetic benchmarks such as Cinebench, uh, PC Mark 10, to just test how good this is as an all-round system.
So in terms of the gaming performance, the RTX 2070 Super installed inside the Vortex S3 performed as expected. At 1080p resolution, most games produced over 100 frames a second, even with ultra quality settings applied. 1440p gaming will also offer high frame rates in most current AAA titles. However, to maintain over 100 FPS, graphics settings may need to be dialed back a little. 4K gaming, even on high end PCs, often becomes difficult to maintain high FPS levels, especially when you've got the eye candy turned up. We again see this pattern with the Vortex S3 and typically the more demanding games struggle to reach an average 60 FPS at 4K with ultra graphic settings. Therefore, either 1080p or 1440p is our recommended resolution for gaming with this system and paired with a high refresh rate monitor, it should be a smooth gaming experience at these resolutions. In both the Cinebench R15 and R20 tests, we saw the Intel Core i7-10700K record results in between the AMD 8-core and 12-core parts. This is exactly as we expected and it shows us that the Vortex S3 will also be a really capable system for workstation or productivity. In terms of the storage performance, the Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe M.2 SSD installed inside the Vortex S3 system is an excellent choice and it can provide read-write speeds of up to 3,500 megabytes a second. Crystal Dismart test proves that the M.2 SSD is working as it should, with recorded speeds of 3,479 megabytes a second read and 3,270 megabytes a second write. The IDA64 memory benchmark test produced speeds typical of DDR4 3,000 megahertz memory, so no surprise, there's nothing to be concerned about here memory read, write and copy performance is how it should be. Obviously, performance is a little slower than other systems we have tested recently. However, they were all equipped with faster 3200 MHz memory. PC Mark 10 benchmarks the system to produce a set of results covering the performance of the system in various tasks, such as essentials like web browsing, word processing and video conferencing, as well as more demanding productivity and content creation workloads. The results of the PC Mark 10 benchmark shows us that the system is very capable in all these tasks, so it is ideal for users who do more than just gaming. So during our thermal performance test, the system temperature was excellent with the case in its default configuration with the mesh front panel fitted. Removing the side panel or installing the solid acrylic front panel, it had very little effect on thermal performance. So in either configuration, users will be pleased to know that the system temperature will be under control even during intense heavy workloads. Changing the configuration of the case, it had little effect on the noise levels. And as we often see with case thermal performance testing, GPU temperature was at its lowest with the side panel remove, which means that noise levels were also at their lowest in this configuration due to the graphics card fan running a little slower. In either configuration, the system noise levels are tolerable under load. And then finally, during our power consumption test with the system connected to a power meter at the wall, we saw during the IDA64 test, maximum power usage was around 370 watts, and then in gaming it was just a little lower. So it shows us that the 650 watt Corsair power supply unit inside the Vortex S3 is more than capable for the job. So overall, the Vortex S3, it's a decent little system. Um, I quite like the choice of components that PC Specialist has gone with. Uh, this black understated stealthy look, it's my kind of thing. I'm also a big fan of the mesh vented front panel, drawing the, all the cool air into the system and keeps the system temperature under control. And the as we've seen with the thermal performance test, the 240mm only one CPU cooler, perfectly adequate for this CPU. And there's also... Plenty of space inside this case if you're thinking about future upgrades such as more storage, extra graphics cards or anything like that. As you saw in our gaming performance tests, 1080p, 1440p resolution gaming, it's ideal for this system, it's probably optimal. So paired up with a 1440 1080p high res monitor, you're going to have a nice, smooth and enjoyable gaming experience. And as well as that, it's also very handy as a workstation, productivity PC, so maybe if you're thinking do your work during the day and then some casual gaming at night really is the ideal system for that. So I hope you enjoyed watching our review of the PC Specialist Vortex S3. If you have, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. 
We also have a full detailed written review of this system over on the KitGuru website. So head over there, check that out as well. Uh, you can also log on to our Facebook page and discuss what you think about this system or other products that were reviewed with other KitGuru readers and viewers. I've been James for KitGuru. Thank you for watching and see you next time.